Hello, it's Get Grinds again with uh, my partner on Earth. So this video, I'm gonna actually be looking at Sharia, Sharia law of the uh, the Islam faith. Pretty sure a lot of people have heard about this one. I'm just kind of looking at the sentencing, criminal cases, civil cases, stuff like that, because I'm kind of curious. <coughs> And so far, I've been reading uh, the sentencing. So, let's go down to sentencing. I, I want to start there. <laughs> I think you guys are going to like this. So, feminist. Oh, son of a bitch. There he goes. They made it easier to read. Alright, feminists, this is the shit that you seem to want to support, so let's uh, look at this. Sharia courts treat women and men differently with Muslim women's life and blood money compensation sentence. Uh, Daya as half as that of a Muslim man's life. So already you're half the worth of a male. Real equality there. I've heard this argument. Sharia law is all equal and Islamic is equal. My ass. Okay, let's look at their, uh, their calculations of accidental death and or injury. Compensation is discriminatory. Okay, so let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Sharia also treats Muslims and non-Muslims differently in the sentencing process. Human Rights Watch and United States Religious Freedom Report states that in Sharia courts of Saudi Arabia, <clears throat> the calculation of accidental death or injury compensation is discriminatory. In the event of court ren in the event a court renders ju a judgment in favor of the plaintiff who is Jewish or Christian male, and the plaintiff is only entitled to receive 50% of the compensation a Muslim male would receive. All other non-Muslim beliefs, Buddhists, Hindus, Jains, Atheists, are only entitled to receive one seventeenth of the amount a Muslim would receive. Saudi Arabia follows the Hanbali Madhab, whose historical prejudice, I guess, or whatever the hell that is, jurisprudence, tax considered the Christian and or Jew life as half the worth of a Muslim. Jurists of the other schools of law in Islam have ruled differently. For example, Sharia's uh, Shafi, what the hell? Sharia considers the Christian and Jew life as a third the worth of a Muslim. And Maliki's Sharia considers it worth half. The legal schools of Hanafi, Maliki, and Shafi, Sunni Islam, as well as those of the Twelver Shia Islam, have considered the life of polytheists and atheists as only one. 15th the value of a Muslim during sentencing. Wow. They're accepting? I may not be verbally fluent, but even I can understand that if you're not Muslim, you're pretty much fucked in these countries. And ladies, seriously, make sure you read this top part here. Yeah, this uh, little gem. Sharia courts treat women and men differently. Yeah, they're real equal. Alright, let's look at criminal cases. A confession, an oath, or a oral testimony of Muslim witnesses are the main evidence admissible in Sharia courts. For Hadub crimes, Hadub, sorry, crimes, that is religious crimes of adultery, fornication, rape, accusing someone of illicit sex but failing to prove it, 
drinking and toxins and theft, testimony must be from at least two free Muslim male witnesses or one Muslim male and two Muslim females who are not related parties and who are of sound mind and reliable character. Testimony to establish the crime of adultery, fornication, or rape must be form must be from four male Muslim witnesses with some five allowing substantial of up to three male with six female witnesses. However, at least one must be a Muslim male. Forensic evidence, i.e. fingerprints, ballistics, blood samples, DNA, etc. or other circumstantial evidence is likewise rejected in Hadub, Hadub cases in favor of eyewitnesses, a practice which can cause severe difficulties for women plaintiffs if in rape cases. So ladies, Long story short, if you're a woman, you get raped, you're pretty much fucked. <laughs> one, one way. Wow. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if you have DNA, they can just throw that shit right out. That's what I'm gathering. You really, you really think Sharia law is your answer? Uh, I wouldn't go with it. Muslim jurists have debated whether or and when <clears throat> coerced confession of coerced witnesses are acceptable in the Ottoman criminal code the executive officials were allowed to use torture only if the accused had a bad reputation and there were already indications of his guilt such as such as when stolen goods were found in his house if he was accused of grievous bodily harm by the victim or if a criminal during investigation mentioned him as an accomplice, confessions obtained under torture could not be used as a ground for awarding punishment unless they were co corroborated. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be collaborated by circumstantial evidence. Way to go, Wikipedia. Um, so, from what I'm gathering, uh, you can be tortured. It might not be used, but probably. Because these people are going to fucking lie their asses off. Anyways, so that's just one good case of Sharia law. I'm kind of going after everybody on this one. Uh, let's take a quick view of some other crap. Come on. Alright. Now. Yeah. Wrong. No. There we go. Thank you, buddy. Now let's listen to some inspirational speeches. I know you guys don't want to hear this forever, but let's listen to the BS. Uh, why not this one right here? What happens during what happens during your sleep? I'm not even gonna try to fucking communicate on that. Let's take a look. Kind of came across this video and I wanted to see it, so let's do this. Allah, his sleep is a great ni'mah and gift of Allah, and Allah says, "Do you know we take your soul when you are asleep?" We take your soul. If death is written for you in your sleep, we keep that soul. So you die. And if death is not written, as soon as someone wakes you up, we send that, or as soon as you wake up, we send the soul back and you're out again. This is the explanation in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in verse number 42 of Surah Zumar. If you read it, you'll get a shock. It means sleep is a small death, a certain type of extraction of the soul how Allah knows best he didn't give us details but medicine cannot explain it that's one thing I can guarantee actually medicine can explain what happens during your sleep it's your brain shutting down because of extreme exhaustion and lack of oxygen maybe these Arabs should get can 
get a little more acquainted to modern medicine and modern medical practice in general. Let's just go with that. Instead of going by their old sand tone, which is misogynistic in nature, and a whole lot of other things, like a big pile of steaming shit, just like the Bible. Sleep is not a death. Death is permanent. Death is a big fuck you, and it is when your body gives out. And the reason why most people die in their sleep is because between the hours of 3 to 4 a.m., that's when your body is at its weakest. And at a certain age, your body is going to give out. Your heart will stop. It will beat its last beat. That's it. That's it. And you can believe whatever you want. Hell, if you want to believe that you're going to go up to a big shiny paradise in the sky or you're going right downstairs to hell or whatever the hell you believe in that's going to be your ultimate punishment for whatever you did, then that's your business. Frankly, I'm skeptical I'll I'll wait to see what the fuck happens when I die. So let's, uh, let's continue because this is kind of interesting in the sense of I'm, I'm kind of wishing I had a barf bucket for all the stupidity I'm watching. It cannot explain it fully. It might come up with a little bit here and there, but never fully. They won't tell you how you dream and what happens and so on. Perhaps just ideas and suggestions, but guaranteed answer, no. Subhanallah. This is Allah's gift. Allah says they won't know. Amazing. So Allah says in that verse number 42, it is Allah who takes the souls away at the time of the death. Allah takes them away. And he takes the souls away of those who have not died whilst they are asleep. So he keeps the souls of those whom death has been written in their sleep. And the others, he sends them back for a fixed portion of time. This is a power of Allah. This is why before you sleep, this is the point I want to raise. We want peace in the Akhirah, don't we? sort your matter out between you and Allah before you rest at night. Before you close your eyes, ask Allah's forgiveness. Say, Ya Allah, in amsakta nafsi faghfir laha. This was the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa If you take my soul away, forgive it. Before he slept, he said this dua. In amsakta nafsi faghfir laha. If you have taken my soul away in my sleep, then forgive it. Wa in arsaltaha fahfadha bihifdika alladhi tahfadhu bihi ibad. Of that diaper talk. Um, is anybody else buying this pile of shit? It takes your soul away in your sleep, and then he gives it back if it's written down. It's not a certainty. It's more blind faith bullshit, just like the Christians. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna go on blind faith. I'm gonna go on evidence, and evidence suggests that you're full of crap. Whoever made this video, whoever you are, I can't pronounce your name because frankly it sounds retarded as fuck and you are an idiot, sir. Look, this is an age of logic and reason. I'm hoping that a lot of you are going, wow, this sounds too retarded. I'm going to continue until the end because I don't want to, you know, exit out of this fucking video until it's over. But um, so far, I, I, I'm not buying it. I can't. He takes your soul away in your sleep, and if your death is written, keeps it. I doubt it. You see, at least the Christians had something that was formidable on that scale for one reason. They had the Reaper. His job, sole purpose, taking souls, digging holes. Come on. But one jackass taking all those souls. Yeah, my ass. Um, I, I don't even know where to go with this because, frankly, this is just too stupid. Holy shit. Let's just get through this. And if you are going to send my soul back, then this is the protect same people it with the same protection that you protect your righteous slaves by. What a powerful dua. So we should be making this dua before we sleep. That, oh Allah, I'm going to sleep. If you take my soul away, forgive it. Ya Allah, I, am, I have no option but to have hope in your mercy. Ya ilaha alamin. Look at us here. We are sitting with so much love solely for the sake of Allah. Ya Allah, grant us from your mercy. So my brothers and sisters, never ever become oblivious of the fact that before you sleep, quickly make peace with Allah. Ask forgiveness, even if it is one sentence. But make that peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You never know. It might I be the last time that you are going to close your eyes. 
fuck off and just, you know, be nice. So, yeah, that's that. I'm going to be doing more videos of this crap because, frankly, this is just, uh... I think I'm going to do a video on this one. Don't worry about insults here. Uh, you should be worried. You really should. Because, frankly, your whole religion is just chock full for criticism and insults. And SJWs, really, you're defending this crap. I just read to you reasons why you shouldn't support Sharia law. If you're a Christian, you're fucked. If you're a woman and a Christian, you're really fucked. And Jews. I'm on your side with these assholes, frankly. I wouldn't say I'm an atheist, but I don't believe in religion. I really don't. I'm just a non-believer. I'm a skeptic. So, let's let's review this. Um, final thought, I guess, would probably be more appropriate. My final thought is this. If you have your head far up your ass, you believe that men and women are different, which they are, obviously. I mean, physically we are different, but mentally I don't think we're that different. And three, you want to see gays thrown off a building, support Sharia law, go ahead, be my guest. It's going to be met with a lot of hostility and resistance, but hey, go ahead. If you believe in logic and reason, take this hand, fill it with Christianity, fill it with the Jewish religion, fill it with the Islamic religion, and all the other religions, and crumple that shit up, throw it away. Just get rid of it. This is an age of logic and reason. When I hear this crap, I don't, no matter how many times you could explain it to me, it's never going to make sense. Because guess what? I believe that I descended from monkeys. I descended from prime primates. My ancestors were swinging through trees, throwing shit at each other. Millions of years ago. Okay. The evidence is there to prove it. Darwin proved it. So, frankly, religion, you've had your time. You were useful for a time. You were. Now step aside. If you like this video, like, subscribe, share, you know what to do, and leave your comments down below, and help. If you don't like my opinion, send me an intelligent comment. Please do. Don't send me a bunch of bullshit. Alright, I'm out of here. See you in the next video, and we will be reviewing more of this crap and kind of seeing what the fuck is wrong with this religion. Because frankly, I'm finding some pretty good plot holes already. Alright, bye.